Welcome back to the Coding Fanatic YouTube channel. This is your host, Richard Clark. I am an Android developer with a focus on efficiency, so my goal is to identify useful information and move as, well, as efficiently as possible and teach you to do the same. If that sounds like content that you're interested in, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can see whenever I upload videos like these each week. So picking up where we left off last time, I continued with my Firebase learning, and this time around I added features that let my app read data from the real-time database. Now I invoked the add event listener method on the database reference object and this would allow me to add the or pull the information from the matching value for that information or that reference in the real time database. So in this case I was using a one of the messages from my database from last time and the goal was to pull that value into a string and then see it somehow. But I ran into an issue when I was looking at the debug method that was invoked from the log class. I'm here looking at the red highlighted code, the red text, and I knew that red font, you see that red font, you know, oh boy, Android Studio is going to give me a run for my money. And it said that the tag argument in that D or in the debug method of the log class, it said that it was had private access in the fragment activity class so I'm thinking all right whatever this tag argument is it's going to keep me from it's definitely going to keep me from syncing my app and testing to see if this data is actually being pulled from the real-time database wouldn't you know I was supposed to create a variable as private string a constant called tag and that's that, that variable is supposed to help me confirm that the data actually read from the database into my application. So I, I went back to the Firebase website and looked at their example main activity and they created a variable called tag and assigned it the value main activity. And doing this would then allow me to search the debug log in Logcat and just type main activity and it'll confirm that the actual code is being, or the actual data from the real-time database is being pulled into my application. Who knew? Now I haven't, I've used log before in the past, but that's usually just part of, I never really paid attention to it. It was just in tutorials and things that I went through. So I would just copy and paste and be like, oh, log, okay, whatever this is. But um, I, I, I chose to do something different. Once I figured it out, I said, all right, I wanna do something different. Now this code, this 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 example, it shows uh, your standard hello world text view right in the main activity. So I wanted to, I wanted to do something a little different. I changed the code so that when it pulls the string from the real time database, it will overwrite that text view with whatever text is in the real time database. So in this case, it was like I really hope this data reads into my app or something like that. I, I don't exactly remember what, but it was some goofy st statement that I put in there. And uh, sure enough, when the app, when it updates, it pulls, or when, it, when I start up the app, it pulled that information in and altered the hello world text view. So it worked. So there, 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 are, there are two things that I learned from this whole, this whole example. Number one, Logcat is great for confirming changes to your code and isolating different parts of your code to tell what's happening. But and, and that's number one. And number two, using UI changes is also a good way to confirm that your app is doing what it's supposed to. But I find that if you can combine both of them, if you do both, then you're gonna have a good time because you can see it on in the con in the console and you'll also confirm that it's actually happening happening in your application. So that about does it for now. Uh, my next step will be to pull into a list view instead of just a text view. Uh, I'm guessing that instead of getting one single snapshot of information, you can pull the entire real-time database all at once and then copy each value into a text view or into a, a list view or recycler view, whatever. Uh, but I'm, I'm just grasping at straws here. We'll see how it goes. So uh, thanks again for tuning in to the Coding Fanatic YouTube channel. Uh, again, like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. 
You'll see when I upload videos like this each week. But if you go to codingfanatic.com and join the mailing list, then you'll be the first to know when I write articles and make videos like these surrounding my projects, career advice, and just efficient ways of learning Android development. So uh, once again, this is your host, Richard Clark, signing out, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.